Getting an autism diagnosis at age 25 was a very long and arduous journey. There were so many different diagnoses. I have been seeing psychologists and therapists, child counsellors since the age of six, all because no one knew what was going on. And the reason for this was because I did not present, nor do I continue to present, like the typical autistic traits. So today I've compiled a list of some uncommon autistic autistic traits that are often found in females. So let's get into it. The very common thing that I hear now when I tell people that I'm on the autism spectrum is But you don't oh, look autistic. No, this is such a common thing for so many girls to hear. This is because we have huge masking abilities. I am able to give eye contact in a conversation. I am able to project my voice to the volume that is necessary um, to the environment. I'm able to drive a car. I have friends. I have hobbies. And so from the outside, things look very normal. But the difference is it's an internal struggle every single day. I have the ability and have always had the ability to camouflage myself to certain social settings, mold myself to whoever I was around, change my views just to fit in and be socially accepted. I really have learnt over time, especially now at age 27, um, how to imitate social behaviours. So I think this is extremely common for females. We just know how to do all the right things in order to not be found out. While I do believe that I have always struggled with anxiety and quite debilitating anxiety, the fact is not a lot of people will realise because I never outwardly expressed it and never kind of had panic attacks. It was very, very internalized and kind of holding it all together, sucking everything in and just, mm hmm yep, everything's good, not dying. I believe with autistic girls, we have this internalized anxiety. Definitely for a lot of us, we can have panic attacks and outward anxiety, but I think for the most part, the experience is very, very internal and not a lot of people realize what is going on. I think a byproduct of this as well is we have learned to kind of shut down our own thoughts our own pain furthering on from that point is we have very high pain thresholds like the other day I went on a somewhere between 18 and 23 kilometer run but I didn't know that I was running for that long I just had this goal in mind that I had to hit 15 k's it didn't matter what else was kind of going on although my feet hurt and I was dying, I kept looking at my watch, making sure, am I reaching the 15 kilometers? When I got back home, I realized that it was in miles and I had actually well and truly surpassed the 15 kilometer goal I had set myself. When I took my shoes off, the mess of my feet, it was bad. One of the stereotypical autistic traits is that children on the autism spectrum are unable to play. There's this lack of imagination and I think for females there definitely is that imaginative play but there is an element of rigidity to it. So when I would play with my Barbie dolls and I would have the big doll house, I would play the same game as such every single day. They wake up, they do whatever they do, they go to bed and nothing can differ from that. They wear these particular clothes at this particular time, they don't change their hair. There definitely is this rigidity to the play, but there is still imagination that still does exist. There has always been for me a hyper fixation on people, probably because people are the things that I just do not understand. And my brain can't process how every single person has all these different reactions and I'm trying to understand every one of them. There's only ever been an interest in people. And so when it came time for me to leave school and to study, I wasn't interested in, in anything. I wasn't passionate about anything. The only thing I knew what to do was to study psychology. Having been diagnosed with autism, I now realize that this is a hugely common thing for girls on the spectrum to go and study psychology. Most of the time they learn about autism and they think, oh shit, that might be me. Funnily enough, I didn't do that. I came away from that whole experience thinking I was a narcissist, but that's a whole nother thing. Trying to understand the mind, trying to understand behavior is a very common hyperfixation. Another trait that I've never really understood in terms of the stereotypical autistic traits is the lack of empathy. Because while yes, there are times that I struggle to put myself in other people's shoes, for the majority of the time, there is this hyper sensitivity 
sensitivity to people's emotions, people's energies. As soon as I walk into the room, I'm able to pick up exactly what I need to pick up in order to be the social chameleon. I can get extremely overwhelmed by people's emotions and I struggle to set boundaries because of this. Most of the time, if I'm meeting new people, after a few hours, my battery is down, depleted at zero, and I'm in bed for the rest of the night and most likely the next day. I think that as I get older, I realize just how amazing that trait is for people to have because a lot of people do not know how to listen. A lot of people do not know how to be present listening to other people's stories. But I think for a lot of Aspie girls, we've learned to listen, to try and understand the cues and understand what's kind of going on in a situation. Difficulty with executive functioning. This might be struggling to have good time management, organization, having a tidy space, and planning. I know this is extremely common for those who have ADHD as well. Well, I myself do not have ADHD and actually have quite good time management. Something that I learned very recently about ADHD is if something is not happening right now, so if you've got a lunch planned at 12 o'clock and it's not 12 o'clock right now, you think you've got time. It might be five minutes away, five minutes to 12, but the person may still believe they've got time to start something new and that's how time just gets away on them. The only difficulty that I have with executive functioning is if there is particularly a change to my routine. Every morning I go to the gym, but the other day I had an appointment that was at the time that I normally go to the gym. I did the appointment and I knew that I had time, I had a lot of time the rest of the day to go to the gym, but for some reason I was unable to actually pull it together. It didn't feel good, nothing, there was just too much anxiety of changing the routine, and so I didn't go that day. Another example is also if I have an appointment later on in the day, so if I've got the entire morning free and I've got an appointment at one o'clock in the afternoon, I don't know how to do anything up until that point. I'm in complete waiting mode until that appointment. So you can imagine the fallout if somebody cancels. You know, that is pretty much my whole day wasted because I don't know how to recover. This was always an extremely terrible thing to happen to me as a teenager because I always thought, what is wrong with me? Why am I not able to actually go with the flow? And the last uncommon trait that I've not seen a lot of people talk about is sensitivity to criticism. In particular, I'm referring to rejection sensitive dysphoria, which is this over sensitivity to perceived criticism or judgment of others. I've struggled with this one my whole life, especially when it came to working in jobs. If I was doing something one way and my boss told me to do it another way, I would believe that they were judging me. I would take that home, really stew over it and it takes me a very long time to get over things. So you best believe that um, those that struggle with rejection sensitive dysphoria sure know how to hold grudges. It's something that I'm definitely trying to learn how to come around quicker. It's not a reflection of you, it's not a reflection of your worth or your self-esteem. So these are some uncommon traits that I particularly noticed struggle growing up prior to actually getting the diagnoses. But there were so many more. If you guys would like a part two of this, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to go follow me on my socials. They are down below and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.